Hello, my name is Pano and I welcome you to follow my sailboat building project. We are here in Finland, it's now early October 2022 and just a week ago I released the first part of making the frame number one and since that I've been gained nearly a thousand new subscribers <laughs> so I welcome you all. In this episode I'm going to build the frame number 16 which is the second from the stern of the boat. Let's take a quick look how that frame looks in the 3D model. So here we have again the 3D model and if we jump right back in here this last frame is the frame we did last time and now we're going to focus on the next one which is this one right here. In this case we have this quite big floor piece here which actually forms the watertight compartment behind it which holds the rudder stock and all kinds of stuff in here. So that's pretty substantial piece of wood in there. Otherwise it's pretty much the same. The shape on the top here is pretty much the same and only difference underneath here is the slot for the keel. So that's what we're gonna build this time. I'm gonna try to do this video a bit differently than the videos before just to try different methods to how to improve my video editing skills and make the editing procedure a bit more fluent. It takes a lot of time to edit my jammering because, well, English is not my native language, of course, and I keep quite a lot of uh, pauses <laughs> between the sentences and words and I have to edit all those away and it also chops the video a bit annoyingly. So I'm trying to make this video with more like a voiceover thing and shoot more what I actually do here. Please tell me how, how do you like this result in the comments down below. Of course, after you have watched this whole episode. And before we start, I would just want to thank you so much, all my Patreons. You really make it possible for me to invest in the cameras and microphones and stuff like that. All that revenue for now is going into the camera gear and uh, hard drives and stuff like that, which are pretty expensive. And the amount of material is not going down. Instead, I try to shoot as much as possible. But before we start with the new method, I want to show you something. In the last episode where I finished that frame behind there, I thought I don't have proper tools to make it very efficiently and then I made a couple of investments. And yeah, these are just so amazing tools. They just happen to be Bosch, no sponsoring here. So this oscillating tool, oh boy, I wish I'd had this for years. And then this hand router, quite small one, it seems to be very, very good and efficient in the jobs I need to do with the CNC cut things. And instead of going battery powered, I decided to go with just plug-in versions because, well, they are quite a lot cheaper and also I have power here all the time, so why not? And of course they are just that much more powerful, no batteries to charge and stuff like that. But anyway, you're gonna see these a lot in these videos. But now let's jump to making stuff. So before I started the actual build, I went to the workshop of my uncles, the same place we did the CNC machine, of course. And I got, first of all, more of these rods to make sure that I have enough of them for everything. And then it was time to sand these ends for good. Here we have the amazing, very powerful sanding machine and that's how I managed to make the ends like this and they work now perfectly. It was quite a big job, took maybe two hours to sand these all, but now they are all done and shouldn't be a problem anymore. Then it was time to begin by milling the wood material. This is construction timber and I just plane them square to get very accurate pieces out of them. 
and yeah, I am using gloves here, but this machine is quite big and my fingers really don't go that near of the blade, so don't worry. I promise I won't be showing you much of this stuff later on anymore, but it is essential part of both building, I think. And yeah, some of these timber were pretty crooked, and uh, here the tables are just jammed in between those. You can probably see here it is pretty bendy. So I had to throw a couple of them away. The job itself is pretty boring to watch and pretty boring to do, but it is necessary to do pretty accurately to get good result with the slats. Most annoying thing with this table saw is that the dust collection is pretty bad, so yeah, there's just sawdust everywhere. Pretty big job to clean up everything afterwards, including me. And this is the stock, I will cut the slats from a bit later. Some of the pieces are necessary to glue together to form the filler pieces. And filler pieces are the pieces that go inside the frame. In this case, this particular frame has pretty big floor piece and also a couple of smaller filler pieces up in the sides. I used epoxy to glue these pieces in the one chunk of wood that will be machined with the CNC a bit later. It was pretty straightforward job, and here you can see the clamps in action. They work pretty well and provide enough clamping power to glue epoxy, which doesn't need that much of uh, pressure after all. And finally, I put the whole thing inside the insulated box. Here you can see kind of roughly the system. These are fixed pieces that go around the area where the heat needs to be. And I can pretty much make it as large as necessary. The largest option, of course, is the pretty much the whole table. After a couple of days of curing inside the box with the heater on, it was well cured and it was time to plane off the excess epoxy to avoid the epoxy dust going everywhere. I wanted to first plane the majority of the stuff away. 
and with the joint replaner I just plane the surfaces down and finally the whole piece in certain thickness that should be exactly the same as the slats are which in this case is 57 millimeters. With a few passes it became pretty good. One more. Then it was time to throw the thing on the CNC. First I needed to load the programs to the CNC machine. And then of course calibrate the Z value on the top of the working piece. The first program is to cut some mounting holes to the piece. I'm just holding it down so it doesn't move when it's doing its job. And then just screw it down to hold it in place while cutting. Then the actual program, it first cuts some holes to align things and then the actual part out of the wood. This is still pretty scary to do these deep cuts with the CNC. That tip goes pretty much all the way down into the wood. And you can probably hear in some cases that the knots in the wood kind of keep this little bit scary sound, but everything went pretty smoothly. I'm still a bit nervous when doing cuts like these. Maybe I'll get used to them later. So the big piece is now cut off and then a couple of smaller filler pieces on the ends here. Just like that they are all cut out. Everything went pretty well actually. And the accuracy is just amazing. This is such a good way to make pieces like this. Then to the next task. This is pretty much the same as the previous one, but this is not part of the frame. These are just scrap wood, some boards I cut into the same width, and these will be the molds of the frame. Previously I did them from scrap wood and glued them afterwards together. In here I'm doing them actually thick as the filler pieces you saw just a minute ago. Here I'm not using epoxy, but just regular wood glue. And uh, this piece will be the same kind of piece that we will cut the parts with the CNC from. After the glue was dried, it was time to do the same trick for this as for the filler piece. I needed to adjust the planer a little bit to accept wide piece like this, which is pretty amazing. I can do pieces like this with this planer. And this came pretty good. Too bad I need to cut them in small pieces with the CNC. Some problems with the planer's drive system. I needed to pull it pretty hard to get it through there. and cleaning up the mess is always nice. Yeah. 
Then the same procedure as previously, Z value, and then starting to cut the mounting holes first to screw it down. And then actually the cutting the pieces, this time there is quite many of them. All these holes cut first are for aligning the thing on the table of course. And I'm pretty stoked that this system works so well. I needed to use the vacuum here to get the dust out from that groove. The downcut blade pushes the chips down very good in there and when the tip goes all the way down there the upper part which doesn't have the blades on it starts heating up. Just like that, all the parts were cut out and it went actually pretty smoothly. Took quite a bit longer, but here they are and the result is pretty good. I'm really happy with this. Cutting the pieces out and finalizing them with these new tools is pretty fast and easy job to do. And finally it was time to get the plywood sheets on the machine. This is pretty much the same procedure as previously. You can see pretty well here how crooked these sheets are. They most probably haven't been stored properly previously, so they are a bit warped, but it's all right. I can hold them down pretty well with the screws while cutting and afterwards it's not a problem at all. The first job here as well is to make some holes for the holding screws. These are of course programmed previously in a way that they are in places that blade won't cut afterwards. Now the plywood is screwed down and the cutting can begin. Nothing really dramatic in this. Mounting holes first, or alignment holes. And here we have the shapes of the frame pieces. The floor makes these pieces quite a bit larger. This frame took two whole sheets of this plywood, although there is some excess in them. So I needed to cut another one as well. The process is pretty much the same, the program is just slightly different.
another nice thing to do things with CNC is that you can do other things at the same time. While I was waiting the parts to cut, I added some shelf underneath my second workbench here to store some things that are lying around. Using the trimmer router to route the edges. Now I have dedicated place for all those clamps, which is pretty nice. Now they are not lying around all the time. And just like that, all the cutting of the pieces are done. Now the tabs of the pieces were big enough so they hold their places pretty well. So I need to just cut them off and trim them with the router. And these tools are just amazing for these kind of jobs. So fast and accurate and clean and yeah, really good purchases. The final preparation was of course to cut the slats from the stock we did. The logic is that I always cut one side of one piece and get a bunch of slats out of it that has one planed surface and one sawn surface. And I plane all the rest of the stock again so that I get again a plane surface to them and then I cut them again and again and again so that little by little I get all the slats out of the pieces. Here you can see they are already pretty thin. The final thing to do with them is to plane these all down. Now when they have one plane surface and one sawn, the sawn surface needs to be planed down to make it smooth and they should be also constantly thick with each other. So first of course I make sure that the thickness is correct. The bandsaw really isn't that accurate after all, there's a bit of a variation with these. It's pretty straightforward job anyway. Then it was time to start preparing the table for the glue up. First I of course needed to clean up all the debris and sawdust out of it. 
and then figure out how big this frame actually is going to be, how much I need to cover with the plastic. This is pretty big, but it's not the biggest still. I just wrap the surface with packing plastic like this and tape them down. And now the frame should fit there pretty well. I left the frame to dry for a day underneath the insulated box and with the heater on. And final preparation was to cover the molds with some packing tape to prevent epoxy from sticking them either. This time I actually planned how the clamps are going to be around the frame. It was very good decision to do because it's pretty hectic with all the epoxy everywhere. And the final, final thing was to prepare all the slats. This time I measured pretty well where the middle is and kind of figured out how long they should be and how they should lay in there. And now I put the jig back in its place and I hope the jig program is still on the right spot with the CNC and the zero point hasn't moved and then I just put a bunch of these slats into the jig and start cutting. And oh boy, this system works so well. I just put them in there and start the program. It does its job and I have 100% accurate joints in every slat.
And then I just laid them on the table and measured the correct length of the whole pile. And the very good thing about this system is that there really isn't nearly any waste at all. All the smaller pieces can be used when I put the joint in them and there are smaller sections on the frames where I can use them. So really no wasted material at all at this point anymore. The first few layers are a bit tricky to get right. They need to end on the exact spot on both sides and need to be correct length overall. So here I'm marking the end on the other side and then on the other. So they should be pretty good there. The slot for the keel cuts the slats in two halves. So rest of them don't need to go all the way around the frame. And here is almost all the slats on their places. And the bending of these slats around there isn't really a problem. And just to make sure that the middle really stays in the middle, I cut the hole in the middle and put a double in there. So that when I lay this down and put the epoxy there, and I can just hold them in place with this double. And it worked very, very well. It was a really good idea. And before starting to laminate, I needed to put all the nuts underneath the table because all these rods will be clamped from the top with the hold down clamps and they need to have all the nuts underneath to really work. And then it was all ready, except for a couple of small things. And that was the fact that I didn't have enough of these long clamps. So I bought a little bit of new thick plywood and cut a few longer clamps with the CNC. Then the new batch of epoxy arrived. Now I should have well enough for making this frame. Lamination day. It went a little bit later than I would like to want it to go, but well, I have plenty of time and I just started the same procedure as last time. So quite a bunch of epoxy in the cup and then just started to roll it down to the slats. It was as big job as it was last time. You can probably see that here is already dark outside and it took way over two hours to do that. But now they are all done and the whole pile is now covered with epoxy. What really surprised me in this case was the amount of epoxy that went to glue this floor piece in there. The wood just soaks quite a bit of the stuff.
making sure that there is enough epoxy on the bottom side as well. And the pile actually behaved pretty well. There wasn't really any problems with this. This time I clamped it first in the middle and put the dowel in to hold them in place and just put some clamps in there and this was pretty good method to do this. Here you can see those last pieces that are made from the shorter slat pieces. I started laying the epoxy to the top sides at this stage so that I just clamped it down first and then on the side and this really was a good idea. It worked very well, it held it down and it prevented the slats from sliding up and down when there was epoxy between there. Here you can see I'm rolling the epoxy down quite hard. It was pretty sticky and thick. Not sure if it was the temperature or was it starting to gel, but it went down in there well and it wetted the plywood and stuff pretty well. And I decided here to leave off the final small pieces that fill the last part of the frame top here. They are pretty easy to add later on there. Just wanted to hurry up with the slats in this point. And after the thing was done, it was minus 3 degrees Celsius and yeah, 8 hours later. After a couple of days, the epoxy seems to be cured perfectly, totally hard, it's not sticky at all. And if we compare it to this cup, which has been on the outside, this is a bit tacky. So the box really, really helps and makes the epoxy cure perfectly. It was a very, very cold night. It was minus three degrees Celsius, but I think that the low temp helped me to really achieve this. 
otherwise the epoxy would have cured too quickly. That brings us to the one issue I still have, the process of laminating this frame. It takes a little bit too long still. Everything went actually pretty smoothly, but it just takes time. And I got a little bit frustrated during the night, but I got it done anyway. And uh, it worked very well. The process itself worked perfectly. I think the result in this case is as perfect as I can get it. So the system works very well. It just takes time and that is a bit of an issue, but that is maybe something I just have to accept with this. Especially just rolling the epoxy to those slats. It will take maybe two to three hours in this case. There was uh, quite a lot more than in the previous one. But now I'll just leave this in here. Over the weekend we're going small trip. A little bit keen to get it out from there, but, but I try to stay in my pants and uh, yeah, I just close it again and leave it underneath here. And one reason I leave it, there is a bit of condensation coming from the tarp. There is some water on top of this box, but I'll get back in the early next week and then we start figuring out the next frame, of course. And before we end this video, some thoughts about the process and how to improve it. The process goes basically in three phases. First one is milling the materials for the slats and to the filler pieces and also the mold pieces that form the actual shape we are laminating here. And that's kind of a basic woodworking and I don't know if I can make it more efficient. Maybe over time I just get a little bit faster on it. But it would be great to have ready-to-go stock to mill from. And I've been actually being contacted by a local guy who follows my channel. Thank you so much. And we have been exchanging some thoughts about how should I mill these a little bit more efficiently. And uh, one uh, idea, of course, is to utilize some local sawmill to mill them for me at certain level at least. I'm not sure if sawmill can really do the accuracy I want and need here, but we'll see about that. That would be uh, quite a big deal time-wise, but I don't really know how much would that cost. The second phase is to cut all these parts with the CNC. That's kind of straightforward already. The forms that make the shape of the frame, the filler pieces and the molds are all cut with the CNC from that stock we prepared in the previous phase. And also in second phase, I would count the shaping of the ends of the slats with the CNC again and mock up them into the frame. Then the final phase is of course the lamination itself. The CNC work, the phase two is quite straightforward. There is really nothing much I can do faster or better. It, it just takes what it takes. The mock-up phase, however, that could be a little faster. Maybe I get a little better at it eventually. It just takes time to figure out how long the slats should be and how to cut them and stuff like that. It went pretty smoothly with this second one. And then the third one, the lamination, it just takes time. It is one day job. It takes about six to eight hours to laminate this single frame. It's a pretty big job to make it all together at once, but I think still that it is faster to do it this way than making separate pieces, laminate them and then glue them together afterwards. That is something I wanted to avoid with this method anyway. So I think now I should really stop thinking that much and just do this jobs and uh, go for it. And uh, I think next time I'm gonna buy quite a bunch of more of the stock, a bigger pile and make a big, big pile of these slats at one go so that I can make several frames from that pile. But I think now that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for subscribing. I just received my 5,000 subscriber a few minutes ago. So that is so awesome. Really makes me happy that to see that the channel is growing. And uh, I'll put some footage at the end when I take that frame off the table next week. So until next time, we'll see you again. Bye.